and welcome back. Happy Monday, everyone. How's everything going? Awesome. Thanks for coming back. Thanks for hanging out. Um, welcome back to Monday Night Live. I'm Steve Leahy, and uh, I will be your host for tonight. Um, got a lot to do tonight, so um, yeah, yeah, got a lot to talk about. Um, uh, working on that same lighthouse painting uh, I, th that I said I wasn't going to work on, which is good. Mr. Reeve, what's happening? Um, yeah, so uh, so that was that was what I figured we'd do tonight. Uh, we'd do a little bit of um, viewer's choice. Um, hey, Aunt Paula, what's happening? Happy Monday. Um, yeah, so a little bit of viewer's choice. So this landscape is real like... Um, hey, Marge. Um, this landscape is really... You know, there's a lot going on with it from um, uh, the from the idea of different textures like in the water and in the grass and in the rocks and stuff so I thought one what's happening so I thought that uh, it would be good to just kind of go on and let you guys kind of help me decide what what part to do on this so you guys can to kind of see what's going on hey Kev what's happening beautiful Hingham I love Hingham Jeff what's going on all right so without further ado Let's um, switch things around and um, we'll get things started. Hold on. Barry, what's going on? Enzo. All right. And Ian, I missed you jumping on. That's cool. Now let's get you guys in here like that. All right. I think I got everything set up for today. So let's get the, um, the business out of the way first. Chad, what's going on? Chad's on my list for tonight, too. Uh, I'm going to talk about some of the live feeds. Uh, and I know I do that. I try to do that all the time because I'm, I'm we're kind of at the, I don't know, it's, it, this, this whole live feed YouTube thing has just been the best part of, of the interwebs lately for me. Um, it's cool being able to connect, be connected to all these artists before way before when I started, it was just in books. Like you'd pick up Radu Viru's book and, and, you know, that, or, or, you know, one of the other books. And, uh, that's how you would be introduced to artists. You know, you'd see their art somewhere and you just, it would just be their art and you wouldn't know the artist behind it. Then along came the magazines, which are great, but it was still kind of the same thing. You know, you knew the artist, but you didn't really know anything more than the magazines. Um, and then, uh, then the forums happened, um, which was nice because now you can talk back and forth with these artists. But now it's like you're in their studio, you're in their shop. So that's that's just been a blast. Hey, Patty, what's going on? And Demetrius, what's going on? So it, we are kind of in the I think in the golden age of, of of that whole kind of interconnectivity, which is which is amazing. So Chad's one of them. I just watched his Fourth of July feed as he sweated out his uh, working on his panel in in a ninety eight uh, percent humidity, which was a blast. But it was cool. It was cool hanging out with Chad, watching him work his stencils and do his stuff. So the, I'll talk about the feeds a little bit later because I, I made kind of a little list and I know I go over some of them. But uh, Gonzo, what's happening? And Roger, what's happening? Trev. So before I go too much farther, tonight's episode is brought to you by uh, Sierra Nevada's Torpedo IPA, which is kind of a go-to for me. It's just a great uh, extra IPA. It's not quite a double IPA, but it's um, it's it's got it going on. So it's a it's a good one from beautiful beautiful Chico, California. Bryant, yes, your your print has shipped. So thank you very much, and thanks for the segue. You're fantastic. So. Well, before I do the prints, let me um, just continue that that thought. So not only is it nice to be able to watch these YouTube um, uh, YouTube stations and and live feeds and and all this stuff. One thing I've noticed is um, there's a lot more um, there's a lot more kind of connection with with the companies that are really hey Tom, what's going on, buddy? Um, there's really a, a, like a better connection than ever with the companies for instance like createx has their youtube channel which is amazing um you can watch them uh, and they they go over their products but it's not like just getting a tech manual and saying okay now what do i do with this stuff you got chris arpin showing you how to do it which is amazing and it's coming right from them so you know it's right um same thing with um with kenneth badger he does his lazing on a sunday afternoon which is once a month i think it's once a month or every other week but if you go to badger's page you can check it out he actually did his today uh because they had yesterday off uh, but same thing you get instant access to the head of head of badger which is which is pretty cool so uh so that's that's just awesome so yeah so um yeah of course you know thank you brian's on 
thank you to Grex. Um, the fact that I do these live feeds are how Brian found me and um, and allowed me to you know test this brush and uh, put it through its paces, which is a blast. Um, you know the the back and forth with Ken, you know, led to to this you know the Patriot and that painting I did for them, which is which is amazing. And Iwata is now you know taking care of my uh, my venerable um, CMC. Which uh, which I was talking back and forth with them today, and that's just it's just awesome that you know you have these major companies that that are so responsive now, and I think a lot of that is because of the way things are set up with with you know live feeds and all that. So that's what I got. Aaron, what's happening? Ow, I stabbed myself with my brush. That's not cool. All right. So that's a painting. Oh, Prince, right. Yeah. So the big news for last week was death of a salesman. Um, I got it back in on Friday or Saturday. Saturday I got it in, and I packaged them all up and signed them all. They have the, the, I've on on this one I ended up going with the gold signature on all of them, um, which is which is kind of cool. Helen, thanks. Holland, oh wow, that's cool. Love it. Um, so Death of a Salesman came out, and um, and you know it it. Like I said I, in the post, I just want to thank you guys because you guys, I don't know that I would have done this one because, you know, it's just a, uh, like I said, it's not just a, you know, this is nice and it has meaning to me, but it would also have meaning to everyone else. This one does not, you know, it's, it's, it, the image I hope is, is what people would like to see. But other than that, there's, you know, you have to know the story behind it to really get into it. So I'm, I'm blown away that there's been such a great response with this. This one means an awful lot to me. So this one is now available if you go to the website, which is stephenleahy.com, which I promise I won't spam all night. But if you go to stephenleahy.com, um, you can grab this print. Uh, all the, the small prints like this or the, you know, the small format paintings, these are all $20. So, uh, hey, Gary, what's going on? And Ryan, what's happening? Uh, so, yeah, so I'm really happy that this one's this one's out and rolling. And I have a little promotion, not really a promotion, but I have something for us to do later on too um so there's that i did that yes and of course I, I pretty much said it you know as far as the thank yous go so that's you, you know it it's always it's always the same for me you know createx is always bailing me out and um just it's just uh just awesome and check out you know john johnson's magazine too all right so let's get to it all right ah ryan i'm very happy thank you yeah, I'm really happy with the way that they that they that they're kind of that they're printed and they're you know the 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 packaging came out great. So I'm really happy overall. And incidentally, I mentioned it last time, but I'll mention it this time too. Um, right now, um, all the death of a salesman is all signed in that gold paint marker, like this. Um, if you buy a print other than this one, they're signed at the bottom with pencil. If you want it signed in gold, so you want to mat it all the way down to the image and you want the signature to still show, just send me a note with, you know, just pop me a note. There's a little message bubble in the corner that was site. You can just click it and send me a message and, um, and I will do that for you. If you've already purchased a print and you want that gold signature, just mail it back to me um, with a little note so I know, you know, who it is. And uh, I will sign it and mail it back to you. So all you have to do is pay the, you know, whatever it would be to ship it, you know, here and then I'll ship it back to you. So hopefully that works. Prints. What else? I think that's it. We can get going. Okay. Well, while, while we're going. So we have a couple things that I can do with this and I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, I'll show you. Actually, let me show you the color image because it makes more sense. So what I thought we'd do is we I'll let you guys kind of pick. Find it here. That's the one. So we can do a couple different things. I started working on the, the grass up here next to the lighthouse. And it's late November. So everything's kind of, you know, orangey and brown. And there's some trees in there that or little bushes and that kind of stuff. So I can work on that if you want. I already started that. The other thing we can do is if you want, I can work on the rocks, which is number two. And number three would be the water. So you guys get to pick tonight. Just start 
doing one, two, or three, and and we'll pick one because it doesn't matter in this in this painting. Normally, I try to go back to front, and I can do that and get away with it. But this one, I can also get away with doing it in whatever order because even though the rocks are going to cover the water, and I would do the water first, um, I could do these rocks and then go you know work around it. It's not a, not a huge deal. So, so we got Ryan's vote for the water, and then we do the water. If if water is what we choose, Aaron wants the grass. You guys are going to make this difficult, aren't you? I love it. Enzo got the water too. Um, what we can do is um, we can do a little bit of both if it looks like it's pretty close because uh, I have it all set up to do both. All right, Roger got the water too. All right, cool. All right, so I think that's enough for water. So we'll do the water. Um, to make it interesting, why don't we do the... Because um, I think I've done... I think I've done just regular waves with you guys like that back here, but I haven't done this here. So yeah, we got a lot of water votes. Okay. So Aaron, sorry about that. Uh, and Gary got water too. <laughs> oh, not on porpoise. Yikes. All right. Water it is. Uh, so let's, let's do some of this down in here. Cause this is really interesting. It's a lot of fun. So this is nice, but I think I did this with the Yarmouth painting with you. I just did straight water. So we'll, um, We'll do the we'll do the the cool stuff down the down the bottom. All right, let me tape this up and we'll get going. Oh, all right. I don't know how far I'll get on this tonight because this is it, this is really involved the, the the water the way the layers are, but um but we'll just mess around with it and see what we can do and hopefully you guys will get you know a good feed out of it. That would be really cool. JR, what's going on? All right. Nice, Ian. <laughs> All right, water it is. Or as we say in New England, the water. It's a lot of water. All right, let me zoom in on this so I can figure out what I'm doing. And that looks good. Okay. All right, let's so. go. Um, actually, I shouldn't have stuck that down. I could show you. So it's going to actually, you know what? I'll, I'll draw it out on here. Well, let me show you first. So what's going on in here is this. It's ooh, focus. There we go. Um, it's the same thing that I was just talking about with the painting. Normally, I go from back to front. Well, that happens all the time. It's all done in layers. So for, for something like this, where it's really complex and there's a lot going on, what I do is I kind of look for the thing that's farthest back. And for that, it's the, the blue of the water here. That's the farthest one in. Now, I've already based this. I've already kind of put in a blue. So that, in a way, is almost done. Uh, it does have to be darkened, and obviously there's details on that that need to be put in as well. But for the most part, that blue is, is there. The second thing, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can. See this neat aqua color, this greenish color? That would be the next one. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start by painting in the deeper blue where the water shows here. And then I'm going to paint in this sea foam greenish color up here. And then the last piece is going to be the all the, the, the white from the foam. And then after that is all the details and all that stuff. So that's kind of the order that I look at it. And I'll do that in every in every instance. Like, for instance, up here, that aqua is not really, this beautiful aqua color isn't really up here. It is a little bit there. But I look at this thing the same way. So that whatever that grayish blue color back there would be first. This deep blue here, I'd make sure I got that in. And then I'd start working on all the stuff that sits on top. So hopefully that makes sense. Hey, Brad, what's going on? What else did I miss? Oh, JR. JR, that, where is that? That's here somewhere. Hold on, I'll grab that. Wait, I have two to show you. This will be, this will, this will be great. Uh, dude, I lose, did I put aside the card already? Did I really? Ah, uh, oh no, here it is. So what JR is talking about was when I was a wee lad, a tiny little pup. Um, I had just gotten married. Um, it was bef when I just got out of school and um, I was about to get married. Um, and there was only, shoot, there was only, I, got, I graduated in June and I got married in October. So in that, in that time, I got, I got a job with, with Vic Firth. 
And um, so that was a blast. So I play drums too. So this was a really cool thing. Even though I was an artist getting out of art school, um, it, it was just a blast work. And I only worked with them for a little while, um, but uh, but it was really fun. And I got my own business card, so I, I held on to it. So that's fun. And if you want to go back farther than that, I, I showed this to Marge earlier because I'm going through a bunch of stuff right now, uh, old stuff. So this was from my first job. And yes, Steve made chicken sandwiches at Burger King. So that is the OG, can I help you? Do you want fries with that Burger King tag from the 80s? So there you go. And yes, I can still make a mean burger. All right. What'd I miss, what'd I miss? All right, cool. Yeah, so if you are just starting out and you have a job you don't like, hang in there. Because it gets better. All right. <laughs> Bryant. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Burger King all the way. All right. <laughs> it was my very first. No, not my, it was my first legitimate job. It was my first paycheck job. Uh, my very first job was uh, delivering papers and mowing lawns. So that's before I was on the books. But that was my first on the books job. Hey, Mastin, what's going on? Yes. Bur see, see, Aaron, you know, you know. Mastin and you were 100% right about this painting. As soon as I started, it was like, ah, I just got to work on it. All right, so first I want to make sure. You guys do have a lot of glare there, and I don't know why that's going on like that tonight. That's better, but I can't see, so that's not going to work. This is weird. Let me move this back, maybe. So while I'm moving this light here, I also want to thank you guys, because after all the crazy you know, do this to build your following and 10 easy steps to have, you know, a million followers and all this stuff. What I found over the, you know, couple of years that I've been doing this is that nothing has a bigger impact on, on these feeds and on my page than when you guys actively have, have an input on it. Meaning if you like something or if you share those, that has a absolutely monumental impact across the board and i can't thank you enough because you know you can buy all the uh, buy all the friends you like on on any of these social medias and it means zero but you guys are the real deal and you guys by sharing it and liking it and telling people you guys are what push you forward so thanks shane nice paradiddles i like it all right mr johnson what's going on hey roy if i missed you What's going on? <laughs> Steve, that's awesome. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was, um, yeah, I was the uh, chicken sandwich guy at Burger King. Uh, all right. We're wasting too much time here talking about Burger King, although I'm starving, so that's probably not going to help much. All right. All right. So let's, let's get going. So first, first, what I want to do is now this is like I drew in, like I got everything kind of locked in with the rocks and everything. And I don't have to be super careful about where this the, the dark blue goes. Let me hook up the airbrush. That might help too. Um, yes, yes. And thanks in advance to Iwata. This um, I was talking to them today about this brush. This is my uh, CMC, my Micron. And this brush, um, this brush was given to me by by a, a good friend back in the '90s who just you know who just. He had it, but he but he realized he just wanted to paint cars instead of do airbrushing. He'd already paint, painted cars. But this brush, and he gave me two, which it's funny. They have a huge sentimental value to me more than the actual brushes. So he gave me a B, and he gave me the C. Um, and both of these, if you look at the head on this, see how it's all kind of mangled up? So he, I love Joe. I love Joe like like an uncle. But um, if you look at the end of this brush, he he took pliers to it, which I'm trying to think of a good analogy. It's like bringing your Ferrari into Jiffy Lube to have the oil changed. You just don't do it. So even though, you know, he was rough on him, obviously, I mean, I, I've had shit ton of hours on this brush. It just it just keeps working and working. But uh, but I, I need it to work, you know, like like a like a micron. So and it was talking back and forth with I I want it today on this brush so um so yeah they're, they're they've been great but anyway let's get this going 
<laughs> nice, right, Brad? Yeah, so that's that's the thing. You know, it's, it's like that brush. And it's funny, too, because when I was talking to them, they refurbish brushes. You can send brushes in. But, but like I said, this one has not that... All right, so not that I wouldn't trust this brush with the, the folks at Iwata, but still, the idea of shipping this brush out, or even even crazier than that, this one here is, is my, this is my um, Custom Micron SB, and this one was given to me by my dad back in 1989. So if anything ever happened to this, I'd, I'd be crushed. It's, it's, I mean, yeah, it's an awesome brush and everything, but it has so much sentimental value to me that um that just the just throwing it in a box and hoping that ups doesn't mangle it um scares the crap out of me so that was basically what we were talking about today you know about the the uh, you know kind of getting those back into uh jolene what's happening yeah marge it's funny and like i said you got to know joe joe was joe was a sweetheart of a guy and a great automotive painter like he painted cars and bikes and body work and all that kind of stuff. And he wanted to learn airbrushing. And, you know, I think he just liked hanging around the whole airbrush community. It was just a, it was an extension of the, 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 the guys he already knew through bike and, and car painting. But, um, but, you know, he, so he was into it, but then after a while he just, you know, he's like, well, I like painting cars better. And, and that was it. So he's like, well, I want you to have these. And, and like I said, I mean, he was, he was amazing. He's just a great guy. I lost touch with him, um, so I haven't seen him around in a while, but I hope he's okay. All right, so what this is, is this is just standard Createx. Well, can't see it because it's blurry. It's Createx blue and a touch of black. A lot of, um, there's been a lot of questions, too, about um, Createx's reducers. Like, I, I just put 4012 in there. Um it does look like they've discontinued 4012. So as I tell you that I use 4012, trust me in knowing that when I run out of 4012, I'm just going to switch to 4011. Um, for those non-airbrushers, basically the difference between the two, the two um, reducers was that one was intended for high detail, and um, one had a little bit slower dry time, but they. Uh, my guess is that the 4011 is is basically it does everything that the 4012 did so they they just discontinued the redundant um reducer so yeah Brian that's a great point and I do have a bunch of um do I yes I did ah oh, such a good um I do have a bunch of Aztec cups, but, you know, it's funny. I haven't used, and I was taught, like I said, the same thing. I was talking to the guys at Iwata today, and um, I was talking about refurbishing the uh, my my the, the SB I just showed you guys. And um, I'm going to not do that because, uh, honestly, I, I mean, first of all, that's my brush. So, I mean, that didn't take the kind of abuse that this one did. Um, originally plus I mean I don't use it that much anymore I, I just I don't use the side feeds after getting used to the the gravity feeds so much so but yeah yeah those um those those Aztec cups were great uh and but I mean I'm not going to show you guys because we're wanting a painting but um the the cups that come with that brush the SB they're just a thing of beauty just the this the engineering that went into those cups is is crazy so Bill I'm going to get to that too. So, ooh, yeah, see, this is not working very well. So we're going to have to um, wrestle with airbrushes tonight too. So I know you'll love that. Yes, Rod. Rod, sorry, Roy. I said Rod. I, I'd never want to mix you up with Rod Fuchs. That would be horrible and a tragic insult. Um yeah, absolutely. The um the other thing to if you're into Createx, the um the 4020 that they have is um supposed to be better with high humidity. It's got a little bit of acetone in it, so um that's, you know, it's it's just it's just great. They they have they have something for everything. All right. Well, I'm yakking. This is done. Yeah, mass and that's look, looks like the way that that's going. So right now the 40 I don't know if the 4013 isn't available yet. It's not on their site. But like I said, I've been kind of messing cuz I have tons of 4011. I was kind of messing with that 
um, this week just to see what was going to happen because I haven't sprayed with 40, uh, 40, 11 in a while. And, um, it was fine. It, it was like, no, like, I don't know why I made such a big deal out of it before. Like I had to have 40, 12 for, um, uh, spraying what I think what it was more was the 4011 or the 4012 caused a lot of seeding when you tried to like do paintbrush work and what that is is when that's when the paint turns into little globules instead of mixing into a into a liquid so it turns into this greeny mess so what I remember is the 4012 was doing that with the paintbrush so I didn't um so I didn't do it all right so what I do is I have this, you can kind of see it up on the edge there. It's kind of this, it's a really neat kind of darker blue. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of use my, I don't have to be super exact, and don't forget I'm making this all up down here because it's not it's not on the photo. So, hey, Michael, what's going on? <clears throat> oh, wait, we have a bunch of people on. Before I start painting, I know you're going to kill me, but this will be worth it. <laughs> all right. Quick, quick story, and I promise it'll be worth it. All right. So I just told you the new print was out. Death of a Salesman's out. Yay. All right. So one of these has a teeny tiny blemish right in the sky right there. You, I mean, you can barely even see it, right? But my OCD won't let me sell this one. So I thought, let's give this one away tonight. So if you've already ordered this, I'm sorry if you win. I'll send you another print <laughs> that you don't have already. So what I thought we'd do, since we have a bunch of people on, um, so I'm going to give you this print, and we'll have a kind of a question. So the question will be, um, what was the beer of choice two weeks ago for the post-Father's Day episode that I had? Um, so that was um, the day, the week, the Monday after Father's Day. I had a... Uh, I had I had a, a a beer that night too. So if uh, first one and you know I'll, if I see it I'll, I'll 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 let you know the winner was one. But I'll go back after the feed to make sure I get the first one. So so there you go. So and w like I said, I mean the the blemish on here is so tiny you can't even see it. But um but I thought it'd be really cool if you, one of you guys had this. So it's all signed and everything. And it's gold and shiny and I'll package it up and everything too. So yes, so start your guesses. And while you're starting your guesses, I'll start painting. Finally! It only took them 45 minutes to start painting. All right. Okay, so. So this is that dark blue. And don't forget, I already, well, you can't forget because you can see it. But I blocked in this whole thing already, which is kind of cool. So that gives me a blue that I can that I can stand on. It didn't have to be perfect. It just had to be blue. So for the automotive guys, that's my, that's my keyed colored base coat, you know? Um, so basically what I'll do is I just want to kind of float this in wherever the blue is. And I don't worry about getting it on the rocks because the rocks are going to cover it after anyway. But that's a good example of why I go back to front so I can just spray and not worry about any of that stuff. Yeah, Mass, and that's it. And, you know, I still have a problem. Not a problem, but every once in a while, and it only happens with black. I just talked to uh, um, another artist about that, too. The black tends to seed sometimes if it's shocked. If you add the reducer and the the bounce and clear, the 4030, sometimes it's. it's I, I should try to do it to show you guys, but it's the weirdest thing. It's the weirdest thing to see because it literally just turns into these little pellets of paint suspended in clear binder. It's bizarre. All right. So this goes in wherever there's dark blue. And again, it doesn't, it's water, so it can be whatever I want. So Roy's warming up to it. It wasn't a green can. So again, I got to make up all this down here. So I'm just going to throw some dark blue down here. And again, this is where you kind of got to look at, you know, look at your reference work and just kind of, you know, make the best judgment. Um, there's a lot more blue closer. It turns into that aqua a little bit farther up. So, um, so I'm going to assume there's more of that blue down here and less of the aqua. And I want kind of a, not a lot of this, but I do want more than I'll need because I, once I get this in and start working on the other 
like the white on top, it's really difficult to go back in and add this step later because it's obviously it's underneath everything. So, all right, so this has got a lot of that blue on it. This is a great, this is just standard wicked blue, but when you add the, when you add black to it, it turns this, you can't see it really. You kind of see it on the rocks. See how it turns green? It's just that they're, they're jet black is, is just really, really nice. And then when you mix with the blue, it becomes this really great, kind of a greenish, darkish, bluish kind of color. <laughs> Karen. All right, I will tell you, it, it was not Pabst Blue Ribbon. And it was not Black Label. The choice of a another generation. All right, let's see what else I got. So it's... Uh, can I show you? Yeah, I'll just pop over. I'll show you what I'm looking at. See how dark this is down in here? That's what I'm looking at. Okay. Get you back here. And that's all on the other side of that rock, but it comes down under here. It is all up here too, but this this color is going to be those little tiny waves when I do this part up here. So, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think I did that on the Yarmouth painting. So when I do the water like up above, this will be great because I'll be able to show you a little bit of everything. No, one, it isn't. It's, um, well, not particularly. Um, all the Createx Wicked colors, unless they say opaque on them, are, are tra technically transparent. This Wicked Jet Black covers like nobody's business, though. So it's it falls somewhere between. Uh, but when you thin it way down like this, <clears throat> and there's a lot of reducer here. Um, generally, I mean, I generally reduce to just to start at 50%. Um, and then this one's closer to maybe like... I'd say maybe like 10 parts reducer to one part paint. So when you do that and then you add the 40, 30, the balance and clear, this becomes very, very transparent. You can see it on the inside of the cup. It's almost like a candy. But again, the pigment has has body, so it will cover. Uh, I will um, help out while we're going to. So as I see them, I haven't seen all of them, but Green Monster IP is an excellent one, but that is not what I had. Heineken is not what I had either, but good call. Oh, I see what you guys are doing. You're going off of the green can idea. Nice. Uh, Mr. Voss, what's happening? All right, I was going to talk about those little waves. So when I do the waves up top, and I think you guys remember it, or if you hadn't seen it from the um, Yarmouth painting, what I'll do on the top part of it is I'll use the same color, and those will be the, the little waves that kind of are in the... Um, in the section up top so it'll be the same color as what i'm using now but it'll just be a different application of it so it looks green in the cup doesn't it yeah it really does it looks like a like a like a hunter green but if i spray that out if i spray that out see how blue that is it's really and this is why i love createx and this is why I mean, you talk to anyone who uses any paint system for a long time, and you just get used to what the stuff does. Like, see, as I build that up, it starts to take on that greenish, blackish color. But when I start painting it, when it's really light, it has... it. Well, that didn't work because it's glaring, but it has more of a just a green, like a bluish tint to it. So, Grolsch, oh man, that's awesome. Porch Rocker, also a good one. Sam Adams was last week, so you guys are on the right track, though. Not, well, I shouldn't say that. I don't want to lead you around. All right, what's I doing? I'm painting stuff. All right, so let me get the rest of that black, uh, dark color in, and I think that's going to be pretty good. It's really in down the bottom, too. All right, that looks good. So, yeah, so I'm not going to touch up here. I'm going to wait to do all that with the... You know, normally what I would do is if I'm doing that, again, because this is the same same color as up here, I would start doing all that up here too. But I'm not... Well, all right. <laughs> again, this is me doing me. All right, so yeah, since I do have that in there, let me show you some of that. I'll do a little bit of it. I won't do a lot of it. So let me move the camera a little bit just so you guys are in the, not in the way. 
And what I need to do is I need to cut out a quick template. And the reason why I need to do this is because I do kind of want this in the right spot. And I don't want to guess. So what I'm going to do is I already started doing this um, because this would have technically been the first step on the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out that band that those little little waves are in the distance. And this just helps me get it in the right spot without having to guess, basically. Oops. Yes, Mastin, it is. It's on a piece of 063 aluminum. Uh, all the paintings, these these two and a half by four and a half paintings, are all are all on aluminum. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up this top horizon line up here, and I know that'll be right, or it'll be right enough. See, there's a lots lots of crashing waves on this side too, but really what I'm I'm more concerned about is the getting the water in the right spot. Uh, maybe an IPA, IPA and a green can. Yes, it was an IPA, but that's not, I like IPAs a lot. So that's usually like this one here is an, is the torpedoes an IPA. All right. So same color, right? And I've got the cutout here. So all I'm going to do is really lightly just use this as a stencil to draw in where the section is. See that? So now that I know where that is, I didn't, I changed the tone a little bit. I made it a little bit darker, but it's still not going to matter. All right. So now I'm going to make sure this is going to work for me. So I make sure this, and this is where this brush is. Like I said, this is one of the reasons I kind of got in contact with them because the head on this is finally starting to show its age and miles. So once air starts getting in where air shouldn't be, and I've, I have to put beeswax on this, the end of this brush all the time. It just got to the point where it's, it's performing less than it should. So, all right, all right. Whoever said harpoon, that is the correct answer. So I will go through the feed next, over the course of the next couple of days figure out who was the first one to say it but yes indeed it was harpoons ipa family owned and loved so good job to whoever said that first i will find out now there are two ways that i that would do this and i'll actually show you both ways first thing i do to make it easier because i could start to airbrush all these little basically well, let me get you real close so you can see what i'm talking about here dave dave oh what's going on man I am doing great, man. Yeah, so I have a lot of lot of cool news coming up in the next couple of weeks, and I will fill you guys in as as things get going. But I gotta get a couple more things under my belt, and then I can kind of fill you guys all in. So the first, what you can do with this, and hopefully you can see it with the shadow, um, I can start putting in these little waves with the airbrush. And it's just basically kind of rocking the trigger back and forth, but and keeping your hand moving because you can't you can't stop because if you do it'll it'll be you know you'll get a you get a a blob there. One second. But a quicker way to do that, and this is where you know you play to the strengths of whatever the tool is that will do the best job. If I take uh, the handy dandy paintbrush to start it, what I can do is I can get a lot of these little wavelets and this is too dark, but it won't matter because I'm going to fix it anyway. What I can do is I can get a lot of these little wavelets in first. Like that. Yes, I will check. So you guys are awesome. So you get a lot of those wavelets in first. And then what you can do is if you go back in with the airbrush, you can kind of blend them all out. So again, you're playing to the strengths of each tool. And that's the key. And when you're done, like, I'll give you the quick, if you guys didn't check out the Yarmouth feed that I did, there are a few steps to this. 
and I do them all the same way. And if you go back and look at the um, the dog tag of the jet on the aircraft carrier, um, I did the waves the same way in, in that one. So what you do is you go back in with the airbrush and kind of you know mess around with it, and then after that there's a lighter color that's put in with the paintbrush, and the same thing you go back in with the lighter color in the airbrush, and then you go in with the with the final little white highlights like the crests of the little waves. And when you do that, when it's done, you can't tell how it was done. It just looks right. And you guys are in real close, but if as you back up, that becomes just the wave pattern. You know, you just kind of, kind of, you know lock it in so this nice thing about that too is that that if that was too dark when you go on top of it with the same blue and start to cut it back in and out nice <laughs> Ian <laughs> uh, when you when you go back in with the blue you can cut back into this and, and basically change the tone of the entire thing just by just by going back and forth so that's that's that so now what I'm going to do since I've got the dark We'll we'll keep working down here first, but that's that's normally what I would do. I would get all this you know, underpainting and done. Then I'd start working up here since I have it in the brush, you know. So, but tonight I'm gonna do that. What I'm gonna do is fall out of my chair. Hold on a minute. I didn't set that up. <clears throat> and that and that. Da, 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 da. I know I'm knocking you guys all around. Sorry. So what do you guys have for beverages tonight? Anything good? Dave. Watching Dave drive around in his Porsche makes me happy. So that's a good thing. Well, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Porsche. I just I just learned that I've been saying it wrong all along. I thought Porsche was just a, a rich girl's name, but apparently that's the way that that they 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 want you to say the name of the company, so after years and years of saying it wrong. But I will not say aluminium. So to all my UK friends, I'm sorry, I can't do it. And Jaguar, I can't do that either. Gerald Mendez. All right, I'm trying not to talk about feeds till later because I figured it would dominate the conversation. But since Gerald's on, there are so many great feeds. If you haven't checked out Gerald's last feed, it could be one of my favorite feeds from him ever because he went in with the intention of painting and he's such a nice guy the whole thing just took a left hand turn and all of a sudden he's talking about airbrushes and he's giving tours of all his his amazing airbrush collection and it was just amazing so yes so i'll throw this in the middle while i'm cleaning brushes um Gerald's feed is on Tuesday night at 8, so you, uh, or, well, 8, my time. Yes, 8 Eastern. Um, so check him out. He's 5 Pacific. Um, Nub is at 9 on, on Tuesday as well. Just so much fun to watch him do his thing. Uh, Tim John Luke Smith, which I just ordered his, um, his uh, set of inks, which, which will be a fun to play with. Um, he has his YouTube channel on. He's on Wednesday at nine. Uh, Bill Snagan has uh, Imagine Airbrush, his YouTube channel too. Uh, so he's he's on. So if you follow him, that's that's great. Um, <laughs> nice, Dave. That's a good thing to be rusty though. That's that's a that's a great car. Um, it goes on and on. So Kelly O'Bear has his Vamps Lounge. Some of these you have to follow because they like Kelly goes on all the time. So it's uh, you know he may have a set schedule, but I just I catch him whenever he's on. Um, he, uh, Chad was on earlier. If you uh, check out Chad's um, feed, he's he's doing a great job there too. My buddy Rod Tickle down in um, down in Australia, such a good time there too, which is a blast. And then I just started watching uh, Mike Flores. Uh, he, he runs Mike's Airbrush. What a happy guy that guy is. So um, I just caught his first, the first feed. I don't know how it happened, but I, 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 I don't know. It popped up and I watched it. So he's, he, seems, he seems like a great guy too. So if you guys have any, you know, that I missed or, or you know, that you guys are watching, post them up and let me know because, uh, because when I'm working, that's, that's what I have going all the time. I just watch feeds, you know, or have them running in the background. Uh, it's great. 
Oh, they also um, Craig Fraser has has a new pod. It's like a video podcast, which is definitely worth checking out too. Does a lot of high end um, interviews, which are a blast. <clears throat> like I said, Tracy, what's happening? Yes. So we are. We're in. We're in like this golden era of of connectivity, which is which makes me a happy camper. All right, what the hell was I doing? Oh yeah, painting. All right. Yeah, Julian, I'm right there with you, man. I just, I, I love it. All right, so here's a good example. This one is Wicked Opaque White, right? So they have, oh, as I'm jamming the needle into the surface. So, so that's Opaque White, 0030. And then there is Wicked White, which is 0001. So Wicked White is technically semi-transparent, even though you've put enough of this on, it'll cover. But nothing like the Opaque White. Now, ironically... I use opaque white for almost everything. So even when I'm doing a thin color, I just like it. Again, I'm used to it. I love the way it sprays. I love the versatility of it. And so I use opaque white. So it, 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 half of it is once you find a good paint company that makes a quality product, then it's just a matter of picking what paint in that line works the way you want it to work. I've talked about this before. Gerald's detail is off the chart and he uses uh, the illustration white it's it the pigments are sheared finer he you can just do crazy stuff with it so it's really what you're used to so oh, okay all right where am i at so oh yeah i actually i grabbed the white for a reason so let me do that sea foam green color now so this will be the second color and this one's just for marge we're mixing paint right over the surface because what could go wrong? Do I have a green? If I don't have a green, that's going to be a problem. All right, we're going to have to make a green. I do have a green. It's behind me, and I'm lazy, and I don't want to get up. So I'm going to use a Wicked Blue, which I have on the palette right now. And I'm going to use the Golden Yellow, which is one of my favorite yellows from them, which is 0011. Another favorite yellow from them, which is a little bit less... It's, it's more subtle. It's uh, the Detail Yellow Ochre. I use that color a lot too, so it's also a good one. But for this, I'm using the, the yellow. Love sunny days off. All right. So clean that out. No paper towels out. Oh, there we go. All right, so what I'm doing off the side, you can't really see it, is I'm mixing up a green. Again, because I'm too lazy to get up and walk two feet behind me to actually get a green. But I don't need much, so there's a white in there. I want this to be, I want this to flow really well, so I'm going to add a little bit of 4030 just to drop. So actually, I shouldn't say a little bit. What I add for 4030 is way over the recommended amount just because I'm only dealing with drops of paint. But uh, but you can't add enough of it. You know, you can't add too much of it, I guess, is what I mean to say. Uh, did I lose? No, I didn't. Dave, what's happening? Exactly, Bass, and that's it. And the pigment is sheared finer, too. So they really do go through brushes better than the, the regular line. Detail brushes better. But, I again, it's like if you used to drive in one type of car all the time, you know that's kind of the story with me, with um, with with the uh, regular Wicked line. So it's funny. I, I don't know. It probably goes against everything that Createx is really trying to market the paint for. Like the illustration line, and the detail line are meant for what I do. But I've always used the Wicked, and this is straight-up Wicked, and I'm just used to it. So I, I hope in the end that people say, oh, if you can do that with the Wicked, then you know I could definitely do a great job with the detail. So I'm hoping that's kind of the way it goes. So now what I have on here is a little bit of blue, because I got that, see that, see that kind of limey green in there? All right. And that is looking good. So that's a touch of blue. This blue, their Wicked Blue is really strong. It's really pigmented. So you can't, you shouldn't, well... You can do whatever you want, but um, if you add a lot of it, it overtakes the color. The other color that does that a lot, or they have a few colors that are heavily pigmented like that. The jet black is like that. The red is like that. 
uh, you have to add tiny tiny bits because it really does it really does blow it apart patty that's awesome two full cider Try that. see that's interesting mess and i didn't know that that's really cool so for for detail work i would imagine that would be also a bonus because you don't have a lot of tip dry with that too <clears throat> this may be the first feed where i actually have to go get another beer because you guys are rocking all right so there's a the seafoam green now again I have the blue already down, so I, I, I have a head start here. Put you guys in the right spot. Get you guys a little closer. I'll throw this in, but I'll try not... Well, I guess I'll have to do most of it. Make sure... Oh, you can't see it. Because <laughs> you're not on the screen. Oh, boy. Here we go. With this too, I, I so I cut out the other other little copy. I've had it here a second ago. I cut out the oh because I flipped it over and I was painting on it. So I usually have a copy that that isn't cut out. And what I do with that is like if I want to try to like put in a like a color like this where I kind of want it to be where it's supposed to be without having to cut out a new template for it. I just line it up and hold it in place. Kind of look on, look at. Actually, let me get you guys in a little bit closer here. See what I'm seeing. So that's where the little sea foam green is between, like right in that little crescent. See how it's only in that little spot. So I don't want to paint the whole thing sea foam green and have to fight back from it. So by keeping the copy here, just kind of staring at it and then flipping it up, I can put the green right where it goes. And for those that want the technical term, that's persistence of vision, kids. So that's what makes a cartoon work. You look at something, and then when you flip it up, your your eye holds onto it for a second, or less, way less than a second. So you can kind of just flip it up and put it where it needs to be. All right, so now that I got that, it's in front of this rock here. So once I get this in, um, I'm going to just do, I'm going to switch down to a smaller section because basically if I start getting into the, 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 you know, the water, the fuzz and the, the little wavelets, it's going to take me forever to do the whole, this whole bottom section is going to take the longest part of this whole painting, but I'll show you a bit of it and I'll try to get it again, try to get it close to, close to, um, not finished, but, you know, far enough along so that you can see the process. I want to make sure I get this in everywhere it needs to be. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to messing with... Um, so, Tim um, has a set of um, India ink, which he's, he does all his feeds with ink, which is really cool. Um, so I haven't used ink since I was in school. And what what happened was when I was in school, that was the, it was either that or gouache. That's what you would run through an airbrush. Um, Comart had just come out with acrylic-based paints, but they were difficult to use. They were just suspended acrylic paints and they were they were they were tough to use uh golden the same thing golden came out with a line of airbrush ready paints and they were just they didn't spray very well you had to fight them a lot they they drove they would dry really quickly um so i so i was using ink so when i was in school i would use you know colored ink and black ink and and all the paintings i did were were mostly ink at the time though um oh i already got it in there Oops, sorry. There's a lot of see that foamy color up here too. Um, at the time, I was running a lot of gouache through the airbrush, and a lot of and a lot of ink. I liked the gouache because it was the the colors were permanent, where the inks a lot of times just the black and maybe the primaries were light fast. All the other ones were were just uh, would just fade. And, uh, and they would fade fast, too. 
So once once I started getting into gouache, I kind of moved away from ink. So I haven't used ink since college. So it'll be a lot of fun to mess with um, with with the pre diluted uh, India ink that the Tim the Tim makes. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to do anything with it till August, but um, because there's so much on so much going on right now. Yeah, there you go, Steve. After all that with the pens, right? So, um, so it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, Jeff, what's happening? All right, so there's the green up here. And I know this looks white, but it's green. <laughs> okay, so now I can start fine-tuning it. So see how if I back out a little bit, you kind of get a, I kind of got all the, like the, the, you know, the main chunks kind of worked in. So if I tried to do the detail first and then try to put all that in, it would have been, it's just, it's just a mess. And again, because airbrush is inherently transparent, all the stuff will show through just a little bit and it'll, it'll work out well. Green tea with Citra vodka. That sounds really good too. Yeah, Tim does a lot of great work. If you get a chance, um, his website is paintedglyphs.com. He has his YouTube channel, which he runs, like I said, Wednesday nights. Um, but he does a lot of other feeds, too. So if you get a chance, check him out. It's a very classical style of, of painting, which is a lot of fun. So, they, Mastin, God, your brain is huge. That's How do you even know all this? That's awesome. So... Yes, yeah, so the Kamar paints, I used those for a little while. So the history of, of me, <laughs> I, I started using Kamar paints. I switched to Golden paints because what I loved about Golden paints, their airbrush line, mimicked their tube and their liquid line. So if you had a cerulean blue in airbrush color, the tube and the fluid uh, colors were exactly the same. So when I was doing all this multi, you know, technique type things it was so nice to have a tube of paint that exactly matched the airbrush color so i switched to golden for a while then after that the waterborne paint started to come out so i switched to ppg enviro base for a while um, which was a blast because those things sprayed really really well but the problem there is they were meant for automotive industry they still are and you could only get them in like you could get a color but it would be like a half a liter so and it was unreduced so a half a liter of paint from them for me would would have lasted 10 of my natural lifetimes so it was extremely inefficient and then of course createx came out you guys saw that saxophone painting that i that i, that I put up that was createx's first run at the illustration colors which at the time they didn't work very well at all <laughs> they were so hard to to operate but they quickly you know caught on and then this, certainly once they had drew's input in them um they they changed quite a bit and they're awesome so uh but then when the wicked colors came out from createx i never looked back they just worked great and that's my that's my paint history so in the meantime i'm gonna get another drink so you guys can do that you guys can uh uh Spectratex. Yeah, see, I never used Spectratex. I used, what's the other one? There's a couple others now that are still out there. I can't even remember. Them. But um, it's more that, you know, if, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it. All right, I've had enough coffee for today, so there we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was that was that was cool, March with the Envirobase, and that's what we were doing. You know, you just you just you know, they mixed with um, distilled water, and they were ready to go. So they were they were cool. The problem was again, it's it's kind of a with the Envirobase, they they weren't intended to be used like that. They weren't intended to be reduced that fine. So no one ever looked to see what would happen. So some of the colors would get really funky when you over reduce them. It was just a I don't know. You know, it's just to, trying to force something to, to do what it really didn't want to do. All right. So now I'm going to, again, I'm going to do this on a small bit of it because if I do it on a whole thing, you guys will fall asleep and we don't want that. So I'm going to take a, one of these templates. I'm going to take, it still kills me that I have my entire shop packed up in a storage unit. So I have to cut on a piece of cardboard. Yes. Thank you, Mastin. Aeroflash. That was the other one. Didn't I? You know what I I I had some of it, but I didn't. I, I never really used it. 
And at the time, again, we were just starting to switch over to, you know, Wicked was just doing their thing. So after a little while, it just didn't, it didn't matter. For me, anyway. You know, and I know those paints. I think, I think Aeroflash is still out there, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, the Enviro-Base paint, they were... The nice thing about the Enviro-Base paint from an automotive standpoint was, one, and they were intended for automotive use, which was nice. And two, they had a billion tints. Like, you, every color you could imagine, including pearls, and and they still do. I mean, they're, they're, I haven't used them in forever, but um, I'm sure they're, you know, they, they've come a long way. So, all right. So I'm going to show, again, I'm going to show you a small bit of this so that we don't fall asleep. But what I would do next is the same thing. Could I just make all this up? I definitely could. But for me, it's, it's I don't know, the, the, the fun part for me is to kind of capture it the way that it really is. So what I'll do is I'll just start by cutting out some of where the foam is. And again, all the stuff down here I got to make up, which is fine. But what I'm going to do whenever I have a case like that where I have to make... So I have to make up all the, the waves and down here. What I do up here first is I'll do a lot of this. So I'll really get a good feel of the structure and how it's all put together. So when I go to have to make it up down here, I'll already have it in my head, if that makes sense. So with this, I'm just going to pick out a bunch of these little white areas. Obviously, I can't do them all because the... I'll cut out the whole thing and then the whole thing will fall out. I don't need them all. I just need a few little markers. <clears throat> and again, could you totally make this up on your own and have it look just the same? Yeah, absolutely. But for me, it's just the way that I do it. All right, so there's a nice one here. And again, I'm going to try not to do a lot of this. I'll just do a little bit so you guys get the idea. But it's so funny. And, um, you know, I was talking, you know, I, I got a message over the week about pricing and, you know, how you come up with the price and all that stuff. And, you know, this is what I'm doing right now is a perfect example of, you know, kind of why the small paintings are as expensive as the big paintings because they take the same exact amount of time. And from there they even have that added element of they're not easy to do so even though they take the same amount of time you have to wrestle with the thing to get it to look the way it should so all right that's all i'm going to do there normally i would cut out as much of this as i could that's interesting too maston yeah all right so i got the white there what do i got in here i got the green in here i don't want that so let me clean this out real quick Start putting the white in, and I'll show you what happens with that. What am I doing? This. So just since you guys don't see that happening and you can just hear it, um, what I do is I flush out the cup with water first. So I get out as not as much of the paint as I can, but a lot of the paint. And then I take a um, just a paper towel and get out whatever else I can. And then I jump to the isopropyl rubbing alcohol. Like that. This is dangerous because if Marge should be having a heart attack now, because if this stuff dumps on the painting, it basically eats the paint right down to the primer which is bad. I lost my paintbrush though. What do I do with that? What did I do with that? Oh, there it is. Okay. So, so then with the paintbrush, what I can do is any of the dry paint like on the side up here. So the, the, the alcohol just eats that away. So that takes all the, um, the dry paint off. Now, if you're, following along as an airbrusher this is where the next step makes a big difference so as I'm kind of cleaning out the, the dried paint I do not want to spray this through the brush because there's all kinds of little bits and pieces that have that have dried and are floating in this and those will will clog the brush so I just dumped that out 
and then and then just uh, hit it with the water again and then at that point hold on I'll show you at that point the, the brush is all cleaned out I mean there's some still a little bit of residual stuff but on a day-to-day -day basis that you know doesn't really make a big difference because that anything that's residual that's left you know like down the bottom there that'll get cleaned out on the next color change but that's how I do it it's nice um, if every once in a while what I'll do is I'll go through the um, I'll run just regular rubbing alcohol through the brush too because uh, that'll kind of soften up any paint that's starting to build up in there which is great so this is just straight white which the cover is jammed so we'll just pour it in There we go. Okay. So that's just straight white in there. So now what I can do is the same thing. I can use this as, as the drawing to kind of uh, put that in the right spot. There's a bit of paint on there too. I don't know where that came from. And again, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect at all. So that's, again, that would have been everywhere. <laughs> I know, I don't know where that came from. A little speck of whatever that was. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I know it doesn't look like much yet, does it? I hope it looks like something by the time we're done. Mmm. And you guys are really close, too. Again, that little speck was, I don't know, it was super tiny. Okay. That's interesting. Wouldn't that be funny? No, that's the right picture. <laughs> I just thought for a split second that I had the wrong reference picture, which would have been really fun. Because um, there's waves all along, all on the side of the rock, which are not in the cutout that I have. But they are there. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, we're gonna have to get close. So now, now, all right, this is where it gets fun. This spec I can't do anything with because I should have sanded that out, but it's, I mean, it's not gonna matter in that because it's gonna be the rock. You know, I'll, you won't see it when I'm done. All right, so let me show you one small section. Yeah, let's concentrate right here. So, um, let me show you what it looks like first. So you can see what we're going for. It's right here. This stuff right here. Okay. Excellent, Milan. Excellent question. So what I have is a uh, custom Micron C, which is a 0.23 millimeter airbrush. And it's kind of my go-to airbrush. But that being said, anything I, I can get just about anything between a 0.2 and a 0.3 to work for what I do. That's just not the brush I want, um, if that makes sense. So if it's a gravity feed brush anywhere between anywhere between 0.2 and 0.3, I can get it to do what I need to do, even the sm really small stuff. I, if it's decently made, I mean, if it's a you know if it's a knockoff brush, that's then all bets are off. But if it's a good brand name, yeah, anything gravity feed between that range will uh, will work for me. All right. So now, actually, I'm going to switch the tablet over here. 
heavens, I can't see what I'm doing. I can't, definitely can't see what I'm doing now. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so with something as complex as this, what I'll do is I'll start basically from one point. And how close are you guys? You guys need to be closer. All right. And then I'll build it like a puzzle, if that makes sense. So I've got the kind of the, the roadmap in right now. So this is just dark blue again. And what I'll do is I'll start by just kind of shaping things out. And again, we painted painted that area with that dark blue first. So there's a base that's already there, which is great. And this, the color that I have here that I'm painting with the paintbrush is exactly the same formula. It's the black with a touch of that jet black. I mean, I'm sorry, there we go. It's black with black. No, it's, um, it's the blue with a touch of jet black in it. And it's interesting because it's probably the same... It's a hair in there. That sucks. Um, it's probably the same color too, but because you put it on with a brush, it's so much more intense. There's the freaking hair again. Where that came from. All right, so so these dark areas are basically just the where the where the water is the deepest. You know, just kind of. It's even deeper than what, I, what I've sprayed in. So I'm just kind of going and put that in. And then, I still have the yellow on here too. There's some of that seafoam green in there too, but it's deeper color. So I'll just um, grab that too. And I just mix this. You guys can't see it. I've showed you guys before. So I just have a glass palette off the side. And I just mix on the palette um, with the paintbrush. And what's nice about the glass palette, and I think I've said it before, what's nice about the glass palette is when the paint dries on it, which it does, um, you just scrape it off and you're ready to go again. There's no mess. So this is a little bit, a little bit lighter version of that green. kind of pop that in wherever it needs to be. So I really like painting water. I like it a lot. So it seems like this would be a kind of a nightmare project to do. But for me, it's it's really, I mean, it's really relaxing, which is why I think I was so excited to really start this because the water was so much fun. Let me move you guys a little bit. And you guys are seeing the glare. Oh, there we go. You're seeing the glare from the paintbrush. Which, I mean, the, let me see if I can turn this a little bit more. Maybe it'll not be so obnoxious. Yeah, that's better. All right. So I get the green in, and this green on this side too. This part of Maine, um, where Nubble Light is, it's obviously very rocky. So there's a lot of algae on the rocks, and um, that algae really makes those, you know, the water seem very green in, in areas, which is nice. Okay, so that's. That's all. I mean, this green goes everywhere. It goes all, all over the place. But I'm just going to work on this really small, tight area. Let me back you guys up a little bit so it isn't as grainy. There we go. Yeah, Dave, it's just it's it's relaxing to me. It really is. All right. So let me um. Now the the white of the the um the caps, all the white, um, is a mixture between the white of the the actual fuzz and then 
the it's like a like a real cool blue which is all the shadows of it and what's nice is that's what really will set off the the top of the waves from everything else where all this is deep blues and greens the the um the white parts of the 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 uh the waves and the surf is is just is just really cool blue so so with the regular straight white now what i can do which i want to make sure i'm looking at the right thing here which i'm not there we go is I can start putting in the details of of that of the waves of the well, you know little foam so these will just become the lightest parts because then I'll put the shadows in after and this continues on out here I shouldn't go out here because basically the the deep blue is under here too and i don't again i always try to think back to front so whatever's behind what i'm i want to do whatever's behind first if that makes sense because it's so much easier than trying to paint around something later on and the way you're painting it is exactly the way it is this foam is on top of the water so if you paint the deep blue parts of the water after i mean just it's just going to feel like the deep blue parts are on top. And I'll put some of the really fine details in on this spot here so you can kind of get a idea on how it's going to go. So about now is when you don't look at the whole painting because if you looked at the whole painting and what you actually have to do you'll end up stopping. <laughs> you'll just be like, uh, it's not gonna be a fun time. And that's, I think, why, you know, again, these, these paintings for me are, are, are enjoyable. Because if I were to do this, say, and people do, the hyper-realists, they'll, they'll do this type of detail but across a four by six foot canvas and it'll take them a year to do. I, I don't have that kind of patience. I mean, people, you know, I love that people always say, oh, you have a lot of patience, but watching those guys and girls do that is mind bending where they'll say, I spent two years on this painting and you, your nose could be right on it at a six foot by, you know, four foot painting and you still can't. You know, it looks like this kind of detail. It's just, you know, that's 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 not something that that I could pull off. I don't have that kind of patience. <laughs> so it's neat because you end up just flicking your eyes back and forth. You know, you look at the reference and then kind of get that get that feel for for what what's really going on there and then you just translate it over and again you know it's it's water so it doesn't have to be exactly the same but it does have to be you do have to understand what you're looking at because if you, if your brain starts taking over it'll make shit up and that's not cool because your brain wants to tell your hand exactly what it knows and it does that all the time so you want to, you know, if you're looking for that really photorealistic type type work, you have to you have to rely on your eyes more than your brain. So, yeah, well, and that's awesome. And it's it's you know, I'm glad you said that, because what you start doing is and what I hope people do when they see see these paintings is that they that they really see stuff that they've never noticed before like every well not everyone but a lot of people have been to the ocean a lot of people have been to a you know a lighthouse on the ocean and you know but you never really you know until you really look at it close up you never really notice what's really going on there and like you said you know all of a sudden it doesn't look like just you know oh those are waves crashing all of a sudden it looks like melting icebergs so that's that's really cool and that's that's why we do what we do as artists to kind of 
you know, kind of, well, for me, it's, it's, it's a great thing to be able to slow people down and um, see some of the things that, that catch me, you know. And, you know, that's been part of the thing that has kept my artistic career all over the road. You know, a lot of people pick a subject and, and they, they, they master it and they become really, you know, known for that subject. Like certainly Drew with his aviation art. And then, of course, he went on to do, you know, the amazing portraits. But really, when Drew, when Drew became Drew in the art world, it, everyone knew his aviation art. So for me, it's, it's just, if for me, it's just a blast to paint, you know, and to capture these moments. And, and that's, that's good, but it ends up being like, okay, what does that guy paint? You know, and it wasn't until I started kind of consolidating and painting small that uh, things kind of came together for me in that way. Like, that's the one thing that people say when they look at my, or know me, you know, there's, oh, you're the guy who paints razor blades, which is awesome. I mean, that makes me happy. So it's, it's funny the way that it all works out sometimes. <laughs> nice, Ian. <laughs> all right, so what I want to do is see, again, I'm getting distracted in a way and doing what I would normally do when I'm painting which is I would just keep working with the white because at this point I would have done all the deep blue stuff and the green everywhere so I could just kind of run across you know the whole area with the white this is all really foamy here so I'm just gonna throw that in to keep it in good shape okay so from there what I'm gonna do so I'm going to thin this out a little bit. And there's a lot of little tiny details in here. So I'm going to throw some of those in. What color do I have? I think I had the white in there, right? Yeah, I still have white in here. Okay, good. So what I'm finding is in this section in the middle here, I can hear this actually isn't dark enough yet, which is actually okay. I'll show you what I'll do. And of course, this is why the rock being put in after is a really cool thing, because I don't have to worry about the edge here yet. I only have to worry about the edge once, essentially. So I only have to worry about it when I put the rock in. Yeah, it's supposed to be a little bit darker in here. That's okay. Okay, so from there, so again, that the shadows in, in those wave caps are like a steel blue. So if I mix that up, I can actually start to put that in too. And again, this is really, like this is so not the way I usually do this. I'll try to keep like one, like I said, I do the white everywhere, you know, or not everywhere, but you know, over a reasonable amount of space. Again, I'd lose my mind if I did, you know, the whole, like I'll try to work in little sections. And uh, then that works out great because if, by the time I finish figuring out the first section, I can just repeat it over the rest of it. And this is actually a little bit too green, but that's okay too. So I'm not going to go too far with this because I want to cool this off. But this would be the shadow for all the little wavelets and things like that. This area right here is really, really dark. It's behind, it's in shadow of the rock. So I'm going to leave that for now because that's a whole different thing. All right. Thanks, Ian. Oh, great question, Dave. So normally I would use the, the Winsor Newton Series 7 single lot, but I started using the double lot. And I like it just as much. So for all the people I recommended buy the single, you're doing fine. It works the same way. But um, and I started buying the doubles because they're a little bit finer out of the gate. So. 
they're the same price. They're about, if you get them from Dick Blick, they're about $12 a piece, which for a brush that size is pretty expensive, but definitely, definitely worth it. All right, so Patty, I can't take credit for that, and that's why these brushes are so nice. So these are watercolor brushes, so they're not intended for what I'm using them for, but because the paint I'm painting is so thin when I put it on, um, a watercolor brush will work really well. So again, I can't take credit for that point because that's what this brush does. It's just an, um, just an amazing point. It's a red sable brush. <clears throat> and uh, to, you know, I mean, I don't often say something is the best, but I have not found another brush that can do what this series of brushes can do. So it is amazing. Yep. So basically the way you keep the point on is keep it clean and uh and then when you're you know when you when you go to use it you just you just tap it out and it'll clean up. Yes, Windsor Newton. There it is. I always say Windsor Newton. I've said Windsor Newton forever, but it's actually Windsor and Newton. I'm sure Mr. Newton is not happy to know that I make his name the last name in Windsor Newton but yeah it's Windsor Newton and it's series 7 again you won't find these in the acrylic they're they're actually a watercolor brush so uh yeah they're just uh they're amazing they have a whole set <clears throat> like any of their other brushes their their big brushes are just off the charts expensive really expensive but again if you're a watercolorist they are the best that there is so that's it I do have some big ones. I inherited some big ones, which is really kind of cool. Yes, I know. That's what she said. All right. So now I have I have the leftover white in here. Just a tiny bit, right? So what I can start doing with the white before... And this is just conservation of paint. I could start going in and just lightening up some of the highlights. And again, this is where a good airbrush really earns its money. because you're able to get control almost like the, the paintbrush itself. And again, this is that whole, you know, blurring the two tools together, taking the strengths of both. And again, remember I said this section needs to be a little bit darker. I really should make it darker before I do this step, but again, what can go wrong? It really, with, with the control that you have with both tools, the paintbrush and the airbrush, you can get that darker without too much of a problem. So the nice thing is if there's a little bit of extra spray from the airbrush, it just looks like, you know, mist from the water. So it, it pulls it all together very nicely. And this isn't spraying very well. Hold on. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I haven't used any of Windsor Newton's paint in a while. Windsor Newton, I uh, Windsor, I keep saying it. Windsor and Newton. Um, the, the gouache that I used originally when I was painting. If you watch uh, Mike Learns, um, like he had a video of the new bar that he made in his house, and he has a painting of mine on the wall. It's a red uh, air, uh, biplane, and that was done with uh, Windsor Newton gouache. Oh, yeah, the two prints I had, the two jets, the two F-18s, those were all gouache as well. So with this airbrush, again, you can do a lot with it. Or, you know, like I said, if I... Um, like the Grex, I could do this with the Grex. I could do this with the, with the Patriot Arrow. Um, whatever kind of falls in that 0.2 to 0.3 range, gravity feed especially. Um, and it doesn't have to be gravity feed, obviously. Again, you know, we talk about Drew Blair and he uses the, the, the side feed micron. Um, but for me, I like the way that, that the paint immediately feeds to the needle with a gravity feed. Just uh, works really well. All right, so that's that. And let me show you that last... Oh, I lost my... Reference. There we go. Uh, so for the last step, so I, ha I have to darken this. I've got so much color on this already. I don't have to mix up the blue. All I have to do is change the value of it. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use black to do that. Now the nice thing about the black, again, because that black, the jet black has that really cool blue feel to it. Um, if I get the black on the white, it's going to end up looking blue, which is perfect. So again, it's conservation of steps. Instead of having to you know, mix up a dark blue and then have to do all that, I can just use the black. Which is... Yeah. Margaret. So Margaret Howard is going to be featured in Airbrush Magazine, Airbrush the Magazine in the next issue, I believe. So check out her work. She does some amazing stuff. I, again, this is just black. Margaret, correct me if I'm wrong on that too, but I, I thought that's what I saw. This may be too much. I'll be fine. Okay, so this is just straight black. And even though it has a brownish cast to it, it doesn't really work. <laughs> Margaret, I thought I saw that on the um, when Don posted the table of contents. I thought you had something in there. I could be wrong. Margaret's been in a bunch of magazines anyway, so it's not like that would be a shock. But okay, <laughs> so... So watch this section right in here, too. You may not even see this. Again, I'll show you what this paint looks like. So this is violently reduced black. And again, this is a jet black. So you see how it comes out? It's like nearly invisible until you start building it up. All right, so that's what I'm using here. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Yeah. You're not even going to see this. So, all right. So, sorry, that wasn't a, the best example because this is really subtle. But, again, that's... It makes a terrible demo, but it makes a nice painting. So, I guess we'll go with that. So, what I'm doing with the black is I'm basically just going in this middle section and darkening all that up. And that was too much, but that's okay. Again, that went onto the white, but because it has a blue cast to it, it looks the way it should be. So uh, maybe you'll see it up here. Let me get you guys closer. Maybe it'll work. So watch this green section up here. So I can literally kind of go in and darken little tiny bits of it. Now this section right next to it isn't done yet. Remember there's no blue or green in there, so I don't want to do the black in there. But out here I can. So out here I can do that. And actually you might be able to see that because that's pretty straight blue. There's no green in that. So let me move you guys around just so you can see kind of what's happening. You like that? Tracy, violently reduced. It's like screaming. Okay. Yeah, because that's super dark out here. Okay, so you might be able to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate the black on the top of this little blue shape, but not down the bottom. And that gives it, that'll give it depth. It'll make it feel like it's rolling under. Now, if I screw the black up and it goes onto the white too much... I just add more white, you know, on top, after, and that's okay. And if the blue is too, if it's too blue, I can just basically tone it down with the black as well, all over it. Do a little bit in here too. Now this again, this area up here is really shaded, so I'm not gonna do any of that right now. So then any place that something bad happened with the black, I can just go in with the white. 
and just pull it back out. This whole area is really bright. Like in here too, this got kind of funky in here. So what's nice is too, that black overspray, which turned blue on the white, acts as the shadow for these little wave peaks too, which is really kind of cool. So you end up just putting the white back in and then that kind of kills two birds with one stone. You add the highlights above and then the shadows are automatically put in from the overspray. If that makes sense. Get it? Yes, thank you, Dave. It is, it's Nubble in Maine. All right, so let me back you guys up, give you the, the full Monty here. So that's that little section. So now, obviously, there's, you know, this whole mess down in here needs, you know, needs all kinds of attention, but it really gives you an idea. And now you get, you know, the kind of, you know, the kind of craziness that will go on in the whole thing. And that's, that's how that works. So... Again, this is the point of the evening where I tell you what I'm going to do and don't show you. So <laughs> what I'm going to end up doing next is um, uh, I will work back to front probably just because, you know, doing all this work um, and then having to, um, well, actually the rocks will go in on top anyway. But if I do all this stuff down in here and then have to make the transition up into here, it's just so much easier to do this strip back here, like I started with you guys at the beginning of the night, and then move forward to this stuff here. So either I'll, I, I, I didn't show you really up close. No, I'll show you this way. I started the grass. If you guys had voted grass, it would have been, this is what we would have worked on. I was just about to pinch the painting and zoom in that won't work so see how it's like a like a dark like a medium tan and then there's a lighter tan on top and then there are these little dark gray spots those are those are rocks and things so basically i work it the same way so it's going to go from that to the next layer and another layer on top and then a little bit of airbrush and then another layer then you know back and forth until that's all solid so what i'm going to probably do to get this done is um, since the grass doesn't excite me at all, like the water does, I, I'll probably want to knock out the grass and the trees and stuff and just get that out of the way. If I do that, if I get the, the grass done, then I can throw in the, the lighthouse and the house. And once that's done, then I can paint the rest of the fade on the blue because this the sky is going to get a lot darker. It's going to get a lot more blue. Uh, the fade on it's, you know, it's, 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 it's not it's not that great it's basically blue 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 and then fades to a little bit of you know light blue down the bottom once i get that done then i can kind of block off this whole top and just let it be done and i don't have to worry about it getting damaged so that's probably the way i'm going to handle it then do this strip and then have fun with all the water that's probably going to be the way that it goes um but you know things change and i just realized that uh my comments got stalled and i've been looking at the same comments for the last 15 minutes so i will try to catch up right now bob rice what's going on you're always on time my friend yeah mouse and that's it and that's what makes these paintings so much fun what i will do since you guys got the kind of the reader's digest version of uh, of this area right here i'll take other pictures as i go on just so you can see you know with the camera that i have i can take up take really close-up views of it uh so you'll see the colors going in and while this one won't be a how-to for anyone you know uh, you know like a like a written how-to i'll make sure you guys really see the rest of the process especially in some of the the less dark areas i guess so thanks margaret so yeah, and then what'll happen is when I do this whole section by the because this is the first section, basically it's a section that I start really figuring out what's going on. By the time I get to the last sections, I would have had come up with a really, you know, solid plan for it. I'll actually go back into this section at the end 
and tie it all together because this section guaranteed will look better than this section. So I'll take what I learned here and in the rest of it and then apply it back here. And that's that's really how that will go. But definitely the star of this, this show, I mean, it's the lighthouse for sure, but uh, the star of the show are the waves down below. They just look so cool. Uh, and this is an epic painting. This is not going to get done before the end of the month because uh, I got a lot coming up. But um, but I will keep you guys up on it as much as you know humanly possible. So, all right. So same thing. If you guys have any questions that I missed because I was too busy, you know, getting involved or drinking IPA or whatever, um, send me uh, a DM during the week, um, and I will be glad to. Um, if if I can address it during a feed, that's awesome because then I can talk back and forth with you on it and you know kind of go through it um but uh, you know i'll just i'll just answer you know whatever i can answer on the fly you can get to me through facebook obviously you're already here so you can just send me a dm uh you can reach me through instagram as well uh so i can do that yeah the rocks are exactly the same way just a different application of paint so that's a great question. So uh, maybe I will do the rocks with you guys too. Just to, maybe it might be the same thing, you know, just start, you know, with the same kind of thing. But I'll show you real quick. The rocks are a lot of paintbrush work and not as much airbrush work. What I would do is I would airbrush in this big section with the tan, light tan. Then I would airbrush this little section, oops, little section right here with the darker brown. And then the shadow in the back. The shadow is almost black. A lot of texture in there, but uh, and then from there, then it's all texture. So it's all, and again, it's all back and forth. So this white section here where the rock was wet, you know, that's done with paintbrush and a little bit of airbrush to kind of make it glow. And uh, but there's a lot of paintbrush work in this. So what I would do with this when I showed you guys, I would same thing. I would take a small section and just kind of get it done that way. So yeah. So that's, yeah, and those are fun because, again, if you look at what the texture is on this for real, it's just all stipple. It's just going to be just sitting there and bashing the brush over and over again. But when you back it up, it, it's just going to have a great look. The rocks on the back, they're obviously the same style of rock, same geological makeup of rock. But because they're so far away, you don't have the same kind of detail. So it's more, again, this is, it's farther in the back, so there's there's more distortion from the not quite being in focus so this is a lot more paintbrush and airbrush so with this it's going to be a lot of same thing i'll paint in the big planes with the airbrush block it all in like this tan section here the light section here and then the shadows then i'll end up going in with the paintbrush and put starting to put in some of the details before i get too detailed go back in with the airbrush and then just soften everything up and it'll be back and forth that way so in the end what you get is this section out here will be a little bit more out of focus than this really clear stuff down in here and that on this little painting will give it so much depth it's just ridiculous so that's what i got on this fantastic monday night and again I cannot thank you guys enough for hitting the, the share button and liking it. And as my friends down in S9 say, smashing that button down there. So um, if you guys, um, it means the world to me. So um, again, if you haven't and want to, if you want to pick up uh, Death of a Salesman and get a piece of uh, Steve Leahy art history, you know, this is the end of an era for me, which is going to be the best thing that ever happened to me so um just run on the site um and and grab one of these um, if you were fortunate enough to win knowing that i had a harpoon ipa two weeks ago congratulations i will get that out tomorrow for you and um we will be back next monday um feel free i told you guys if you have any questions you know send me a message but if you have an idea of what you want to see on a monday night shoot it my way because like i said monday night is i'm done working so i've worked all day i painted i'm doing all my stuff and monday night is for you guys so if you know i'll work on stuff that i think is interesting but if you guys have an idea just send me a message you know um at, like i said after seeing gerald's feed last week where that did, that thing went sideways in the best way um i'm all for it so so let's do it so you guys have a safe and happy week um, and I will um, catch you guys all next Monday at 6. All right. I love you guys. Take care.